Hey everybody, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and this week I've got a new video here. I want to do a one universe stage setup challenge. So, what does this mean? Well, basically, um, recently I was talking to one of my students, and this idea came to mind. I thought about how a lot of times people whether it's based on the console they're using or the wiring in their facility, they might be limited to one DMX universe versus full of lights. And while in the past, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, that meant you could put a lot of lights on your, your console, nowadays it doesn't necessarily mean that anymore. And so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from scratch and build a new stage setup for a 24 foot wide by let's say 18 foot deep stage. And so I'm going to draw it as a portable stage, but it could be a, a church stage, it could be a theater, it could be in a bar somewhere, in a club, whatever. Um, but the concept is this. How many lights can I get into it within one universe of light? And then also, how can I make the biggest bang for the buck? How can I make the most impact on a stage design with a limited amount of lights? Let's dive in. All right, so here we are in Capture the Visualizer, and I'm starting to work this out in 3D, what this might really look like. So I just went ahead, I opened up a basic stage with some basic players on it um, in a drum set and these two road cases on the back to act like amplifiers or cases or whatnot. Um, I brought in these two trusses right here for my front light, and then the backlight truss is all the way up there, but I think I might lower it in. Um, and so the idea behind this is I just kind of want to show you some principles that I use to make a lighting rig that can do a lot without having to have a ton of lights or a ton of cost um, or a ton of DMX channels. And so it's really uh, more of a brainstorming message slash just me going over, okay, the shows that I've done where, you know, we've got to come up with a solution for not a lot of money, you know, not a lot of resources. Here's how we've done it. And so I, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get building. The first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about lights that don't take up a lot of channels because the biggest part of this challenge is the channel limitation. If we start to get into lights like moving head washes and things like that that have a lot of channels, we're going to run into a problem. What we're looking for here is impact without a ton of channels. So what I think of that with that is some simple LED pars with three or four channels, some RGBs or some RGBAs. And so uh, I'm going to go find some of those. And, and the other thing I'm thinking about is moving head wash lights. You know, this being uh, a light that is um, something that could hopefully zoom, have some color, but isn't too complicated. So I decided to go with three lights uh, for this particular example, or four rather. And the four lights that I chose are the uh, ADJ PAR Z120 RGBW. This is a really nice PAR that I can zoom, which is killer. So it, it sure here in capture has, is showing fixed optics, and that's true, but you're able to get from 7 degree to 25, which is really cool. Um, and so I can make those as wide as I want for the front light and, and really spread across that stage with just a few lights. And next, I've got the Eliminator Mini Par RGBW. So my goal here with this design is to use this inside of the trusses and maybe a few other places. Um, this is a great little light that I, I just bought a few the other day to try them out. And it's this $25, literally $25, 12 watt RGBW LED light. And it's pretty cool um, for what it is, you know, that for that inexpensively that you can get a light. Next, we've got the Inno Pocket Z4 from ADJ. Um, I just really went through their site and just was looking for something that packed a lot of punch, um, 40 watts of LEDs, but not a lot of channels. You know, no, no, that pixel mapping. It's it's still got two different sets of LEDs that you can control, but it fits within 16 channels, which is great for this challenge. And the optics are zoomable. 
Then we've got the ADJ Focus Spot 4Z. Um, I just went all with one brand to keep it simple. That's what I like to recommend to people. It's like today, especially, there's a lot of good brands out there that, that make lights, especially on the less expensive end. Now there's more than ever before, you know, reputable companies that'll sell you a really great product. Um, but if you are going to buy a lighting rig and you're buying different lights at different times or all at the same time, I'd really recommend sticking with just one manufacturer. There's multiple good ones. And if you stick with one, then you get that extra um, attention from your dealer because they're going to see that you're building your rig just with their lights. Um, you're also going to get the ability if you need service. You can mention you know, to your dealer if, if you need something fixed, you know, remind them that all your stuff is from them and, and that helps as well. Um, and it just really streamlines things along the way. So that's my big recommendation there. Unless there's some, some perfect light that you want from some other brand and you know, there's just nothing like it, then I guess that'll work. So the next thing I'm going to do is lay out my trusses. And so I had, I previously had brought this, this one in this upstage one and looking at my paper drawing, I had made two kind of, uh, corner trusses that cut off the corner. So let's go ahead and build those. So I'm just going to grab a piece of truss here and copy it and turn it. And it is going to be at, you know, I, I positioned that case in such a way that it's about 25 degrees. And I really dig that. And so, you know, obviously how this is hung is, oops, is kind of mythical. It's not necessarily real. Um, but what I want to do is I want to just make sure it's underneath my my upstage truss. That's that's going to be key for making some really great looks. Um, of course, like any show, I'm, I've got it probably up on stands and I've got it just hanging off the stage. So if I need to manage my cables, they can all go off the stage and be gone. I'm going to clone this one now again. Make him a buddy. And we want to go this time. Let's see. So first... We go minus 25, we're flat, so we want to go minus 50. And that's going to put us at, I believe, the exact opposite angle. That looks right. We'll find out here in a second if they line up. Yeah, they look like they're lining up good. They're at the same height. Um, and, um, and with these, you know, ultimately, you could come down if you had the space and the stuff. And instead of having this on, like, lighting stands, you could put it on actual truss towers vertically um and that would make a really cool look but for now i'm just going to leave it as it is saying that it's supported we don't necessarily know how um but there's definitely multiple ways that you could do that so i want to start laying out my lights um like i always do with anything gotta start with the front wash uh, i notice i've chosen all my modes here um i didn't mention this before but the uh, inno pocket z4s i'm gonna go ahead and um put in 16 channel mode they could be or the focus spots it was they could have been in 16 but i put them in 18 because i want to get that 16-bit uh, pan and tilt to have so things don't get stepping again this is you know just kind of an example rig this uh with a band but this could really be a dj setup this could be at a church for a worship team um this could be a band it, it's really something that could fit any of these types of lighting Kind of a good general purpose stage so stage wash let's go ahead and just uh bring this guy over what we're gonna do is i like to keep my view set up like this in capture Oops, move that back there so i've got a front view i can tilt it I can move it into place i'm actually hanging it there then i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on we don't have a console hooked up right now I'm gonna make it so let me just go here and capture. This is kind of a capture tutorial too. Go to my ambient lighting and chop it in half so I can still see what's going on if there's no lights on, but don't need to see that much. And so that actually looks like a pretty good focus. Um, what I'm going to do is go to the top view here and just literally just whoop, move it to the other side of the truss. Kind of lighten our lead sing in our bassist with that. Oops, I almost had it there, right about there. I'm just going to clone it. I don't really care about where I put the clone because I'm going to move it right away. Oop, I did that twice, didn't I? Well, that was fun. Put another guy there. You know, maybe this show's simple enough and you just got 
We just got a few. Turn this one on. Gonna cover that guy pretty well. So that's gonna cover our, uh, I believe it's the guitarist on this side. If I had some diffusion or one of those uh, LED filters in this case, I would definitely be using that right now. Now I'm going to go ahead. Let's do a third can. Luckily, we've got one here already. Move that one in. So from a physical perspective, I'm going to have to either raise or lower it. So I'm going to put it on top of this truss here. Turn it on. And we will light our friendliest drummer who is absent because in the default capture models, I was not seeing a, a drummer, a sitting person. <laughs> and uh, we don't want to have a standing drummer here. That's not going to work. We're lighting our drummer there, and then we're literally just going to grab these three lights, but not the truss. going to clone them. We'll literally turn these guys on. Move them over here. Turn them. And if we position them in the right place, chances are we can literally just go ahead. It's going to go taller. Like that. We can literally go ahead and probably get this tilt just right so that we're hitting all the same guys again. There we go. Cool. So that kind of works for a basic front light. Again, you know, just kind of doing a basic set up here if you were in an installed building you would definitely have your front light out somewhere in front and not on these little trees so let's go ahead and uh, do a couple backlight pars as well the great thing is if you're trying to save dmx channels you know whether this is on a big rig or a small rig there's nothing like a three or four channel um led par to really help you out with that so what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and uh, grab my last one here and clone it. And we're just going to kind of point it straight forward here. Move it to where we can see it. Turn it a color. So I think we'll use these kind of as band member spots. I'm going to go ahead with these guys and change my angle. It's not quite that narrow. Let's get a little more punch out of these guys. So we'll mirror that. Looks like right about here, but we'll turn it. All right, so I'm going to fast forward through the rest of my decision making here. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead. I've kind of sketched out the basics of what I want to do. And I'm going to patch my stuff to see how many channels I'm at. Because right now I'm just in dreamland. Um, and I need to go ahead and patch this stuff. So that I know how many channels I'm using. I think I'm in a pretty good place. But we're about to find out. Alright, so at this point I've got a pretty basic rig. And I'm really ready to expand on it. Because I'm only at channel 231. Which is, you know, roughly half of the DMX channels. A little bit less actually. And so I, I think this really can go to show you how much a, a single DMX universe can do if you really don't get into things that are really pixelated. Um, and so what I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead. So basically I've got um, four of these uh, ADJ um, Inno Pocket or Focus Spot 4Zs. I've got eight of these um, Inno Pocket Z4s. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, add in a few more of these focus spots. Then I'm going to do some truss warmers with my Eliminator Mini Pars. And then I think I'm going to shoot myself in the foot and use the rest of my DMX channels for some LED strip lights um, that have basically pixels. All right, so jumping ahead, what I've done is I've finished laying this out and I've... Uh, put it all together. So the first thing that I did that I wanted to highlight here is that um, I brought in these guys to use my last few channels. And um, this is where I broke my rule that I talked about. I, I put up a little annotation on the screen because, you know, I said, hey, if you can stick with one manufacturer for your whole rig, you know, do it. 
and, and I got ADJ, but then these guys are from Chave, and they're the uh, Chave Color Band Pix M. And what they can do that's cool is, uh, if I show you here, let me turn off some other stuff, is they've got individual pixel control. So it's using up a lot of channels. It used up like 200, almost, no, not almost 200 channels, somewhere between one and 200 channels for these five lights um, because they're 36 channels each. But it's an awesome effect, the ability to have a tilting light, have that individual pixel control. So this is kind of, the purpose of this was just to do a one universe challenge. And so what I wanted to really show you is how even if you only have one universe, you can really do a lot. So just running through the rig here, we've got our front light here. We shouldn't really use green. Um, but uh, let's do amber red. Yeah. So we've got our front lights. We've got our back lights here. Um, then we've got uh, the rest of the back lights there on the drummer. Whoop. Then we've got our spots, our moving head spots, which are those uh, ADJ4Zs. Then I've got those uh, other ones, the wash units. Again, everything's earlier in this video or below. We'll have links to all the lights and where you can get them. Then we've got whoop, our color bands, which are very bright, a cool blinder slash backlight wash slash effects fixture. Like you can put these guys in people's faces and dim them down low and then you know, run some really interesting effects off of them, like I showed you. Um, and then we've got the truss warmers, which are hard to see right now. But but what I like to do, actually, is, you know, say you go into a really chill song. You could literally just come down to this, you know, maybe even just, just these basic pars and those. And it looks really simple. So my point here is that there's so much you can do with a small rig like this. And so... Even if you feel like maybe you're trying to build from the ground up or um, add to an existing rig and you might have the limitation of only having one universe. But as you can see here, there's really a lot that you can do with it. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this and really enjoyed this challenge, this look that I put together of an example lighting rig that you could use for a band, a church, a DJ, that really has a lot of great uses. In fact, I'm looking at it over there now. Um, if you liked this, be sure to subscribe and like this video. I haven't really done a video like this before, so I want to hear your feedback below in the comments. So give the video a like, as I said, and also let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it or whether you didn't, let me know if you have any li other lighting design challenges you want to throw at me. Say, you've got this much space and, you know, this much money. What could be the most effective thing? And, you know, I'm going to play around with some of these. I'd love to do more in the future. They, they take a good bit of time, but you know what? It's all about you guys and helping you guys learn to really, you know, be able to create your very best lighting, even if you're new to this. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, one of the reasons I'm able to get up and going with new rigs so fast is because of some principles that I teach inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs. So if you've caught things here on YouTube and you say, wow, this has really helped me, then the information, the courses, which I call action plans, which are available in the labs, are really going to help you. And so head over to the link that's going to pop up on the screen here so that you can learn more about Learn Stage Lighting Labs. I hope you have a great day and that you improve your lighting this week. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.